Hey, everybody. This is Mark H. Williams, author of the book Embracing Lilith, and this is Circle the Dark Mother. Today, I'm going to do another reading from the Embracing Lilith myth. This is part eight. This myth is found in my book Embracing Lilith, and what I did is I took all the myths of Lilith um, that I could find and put them together into one story. It's really important to note that this story is a myth, which means it's not supposed to be how things actually happened. It's not saying it's the only way. It's one telling of the Lilith myth based on all of her stories. Um, I also wanted to say that um, if you're coming into this with part eight, you probably want to go back to part one because it is a continuing story um, that you will find on the, the same channel and you can go back and start from the beginning. Um, also, if you like our content, please like and subscribe. Chapter seven. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Genesis 4, 8. My wanderings took me to what you would now call Southeast Africa. I came upon a small encampment where I saw two young, dark-skinned men. One worked the land cultivating the earth, while the other tended livestock. As I came closer, I took physical form and my, made myself appear to be a human woman. I took, for some reason, these men intrigued me, and I thought maybe they were somehow part of my quest. To be truthful, I've, I had no idea, because I, I had no idea what I was looking for, but something drove me to search. When I drew close to the house, the man tending the livestock saw me and came over. Greetings, my name is Abel. Welcome to our home. My mother and father will want to greet you and offer you refreshments. At this time in human history, being welcoming and providing hospitality was deeply important. Travel was not easy, and there were not that many people inhabiting the earth. So a visitor was a big deal and was always treated with great respect. I said, greetings, Abel. I am Naama. Thank you for your welcome. I would love to meet your parents. I chose the name Naama, meaning pleasant, because I had used it previously. The name did not attract a lot of undue attention and was accepted readily. Abel took me into their dwelling and called out, Mother, Father, we have a visitor. Her name is Naama. The man and woman who rose to greet me were, wore quizzical looks on their faces. I'm sure it was due to the look of shock on my own upon seeing them. I couldn't mask my emotions quickly enough. Standing before me, though looking very different than they had in Eden, were Adam and Eve. Something of their souls shone out to me, and I knew them immediately. I quickly recovered and said, I'm sorry for my surprise, but you both look very much like a couple I used to know. Luckily, I had chosen a physical form which looked nothing like either of the forms they had seen me in while in Eden. Being human, they had no way of detecting my real identity. Welcome, please come in and sit, said Adam, as they drew me over to the area where they took food. Eve told Abel to go get his wife and sister-in-law to gather food and drink. We sat for a long time talking. I asked them about their lives and their children. They asked me about where I came from and why I was traveling. I made up a story of how I had traveled from a far off land in search of a relative, a tale easy to spin and hard to disprove. Even though I felt guilt over what had happened to them, I was still wary. Adam had abandoned me and Eve had seen me as an abomination. I saw that their lives were difficult and they had much suffering, although they had only spoke of the blessings. I could see the shadow of pain they carried because of the separation they had endured when cast out of Eden. Bitterness and pity conflicted me. After a time, I heard someone else entering their home. As the man came in, Eve said, come Cain, meet our new friend Naama. Cain came over to where we sat, but made no effort to greet me. He was quite handsome, however, he had a darkness about him. He sat and watched as the rest of us conversed. I would look over at him from time to time, trying to understand what seemed so familiar yet frightening in this man. I was careful not to stare or draw anyone's attention. I couldn't place exactly what caused my concern, but something was just not right with Cain. As night came, Eve asked if I would like to stay and sleep there so I could renew my journey rested. I had not thought to stay, but I wanted to unravel the mystery of Cain, so I agreed. Since I didn't have the same sleep requirements as mortals, I pretended to slumber and slipped out of my physical form. 
I moved silently through the home and came up upon Kane and his wife, both asleep. I reached down and touched Kane with my ethereal hand, using my spiritual sense to dig deeper into this man who, for some unknown reason, disturbed me so much. I pulled back as if burnt by a hot coal, in a way I had been. What I felt when I touched Cain was the presence of Samael. Somehow, some way, Cain was his son. I went back to where I had pretended to sleep and resumed physical form. How had Samael fathered this boy? How had it even managed to come here? I had thought him as far gone from me as the land of Nod in which I had left him, and I'd had no indication otherwise in the many years I had wandered the earth. I did not rest my consciousness at all that night, but stayed vigilant in case Samuel was close. When the family awoke the next day, I joined the women in preparing food. When they asked, asked if I was eager to resume my journey, journey, I said, not quite yet, and asked if I could stay a while. I claimed fatigue, but said I would be more than happy to help the woman with their chores of cooking and mending to earn my keep. They readily agreed. I lived among them for several days when one afternoon we heard shouting outside. We all ran out to see what was happening, only to find Cain and Abel in a heated argument. Although to be truthful, Cain was the one heated, and Abel appeared mostly confused. The argument seemed to be over their offerings to God, because Cain felt slighted. As Adam approached to try to calm the two young men, Abel turned to walk away. Suddenly, Cain picked up a large rock and slammed into the back of his brother's head, with such force that it crushed Abel's skull. Blood spattered everywhere, covering Cain's arms. The women screamed, and Adam fell to his knees, sobbing. I could only look on in total disbelief. That's the end of that section, and we'll pick up with... Uh, um, the ninth installment uh, next time. Thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed.